What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome to the first of two videos dropping on the channel today. Tonight, this evening, you know, settle in. Here in Canada, it's snowing. What a perfect night just to sit in and watch the Super Bowl special for the Toronto Huskies. I don't even know what we're playing. I have not played the game yet. I'm doing it right after this video is done recording. So uh, the, the anticipation is killing me as well. But before that, why not talk about my playoff predictions? Head some bets, stick my neck out of line, and try and predict who's going to win the Super Bowl this year. We already got my thoughts on the Eagles versus the Bears. But I figured before we jump into the playoff predictions, let's take a quick look back. Hey, where was this? Probably first week of September, last week of August, where I did my regular season predictions, see how well we fared there. And, you know, it's, it's just very much like the Philadelphia Eagles when we talk about my regular season predictions. It doesn't really matter much because now we're in an entirely different season that we're here in the playoffs. Now that I covered my ass, looking at my predictions, I had the uh, AFC East, went to the Patriots, that was easy. AFC North, I went to the Steelers, wrong. AFC South, we had the Houston Texans, correct. AFC West, we had the LA Chargers. Now, while they didn't win the division, we're still given half a point because they did make the playoffs. Wildcard one, we had the Jags. Wildcard two, we had the Broncos. That's disgusting. Go to the NFC in the East, we had the Philadelphia Eagles. That's a half point because even though they didn't outright win the division, because thanks to the refs, they still made the playoffs, so they're a playoff team. NFC North, we had the Vikings. Gross. NFC South, we had the Saints. Easy pick, but correct. NFC, uh, NFC West, we had the Rams. Correct pick, kind of easy. And the wild card for the NFC, we had the Atlanta Falcons and Green Bay Packers. Gross. I mean, maybe the Falcons were healthy. I mean, who can predict with all the injuries they had? But either way, while the winners of the divisions didn't look great, both of my championship games predictions are still in play. I had the AFC championship game as the Patriots versus the Texans. We had the Houston Texans winning. And the NFC Championship game, I had the Eagles versus the Rams, which still also has a very decent chance of happening. So I'm still in play. I'm still in play for when it counts. So things have changed slightly, obviously, now that I can reassess things. So when I do my playoff predictions, we'll kind of uh, we'll, we'll dive into it. Uh, for individual awards, real quick, I had for MVP, I went Carson Wentz. That was wrong. Offensive Player of the Year went to Sean Watson. That was wrong. Defensive Player of the Year, I had Jalen Ramsey. Wrong. Now he might be traded. Offensive Rookie of the Year was easy. It was Saquon Barkley, and he got it. Defensive Rookie of the Year went Roquan Smith. And Coach of the Year went Bill O'Brien. So didn't do so well on the individual awards either. Uh, for the National Championship, again, very, very easy. Almost as automatic as picking the Patriots to win the AFC East. I had Clemson versus Alabama with Alabama winning. And for the Heisman, I'm, I'm almost giving myself half a point there because he was, in my opinion, the rightful winner. I had Tua Tagovailoa winning. Obviously, Kyler Murray won, but we saw push come to shove. Tua probably was the deserving winner. So my regular season predictions didn't go so hot this year, but we're definitely going to turn it. Like I said, it doesn't matter because we're in a new season now talking about the playoffs. So here we go. And I'm just going to go AFC, NFC. I'm not going to do like, you know, just the games that are on Saturday and the games that are on Sunday. So starting in the AFC, we have wildcard matchup one, which is the Indianapolis Colts versus the Houston Texans. Third time they've played this year. Going to be really interesting. Really tough to predict because anytime a team plays each other three times, you never know. There could be some, some, some mystique. There could be some je ne sais quoi, some things in the air. Three times is not a good time to play. That's why so many people are, you know, defending the Chicago Bears, beating the Minnesota Vikings, so they didn't have to play the Vikings for the third time in the wild card. But looking at here, the battle of the AFC South, I'm going with the Indianapolis Colts. I'm going with a team that is on a 9-1 record against, a 9-1 record with one of the hottest quarterbacks in the league against, when you look at the Houston Texans, their weakness is their secondary. Even though they've had some great play out of, Kareem Jackson, who had probably a career year. You have obviously have Honey Badger back there. They just struggle against the pass. And I'm using this as someone that has the Texans going to the Super Bowl. As someone that is, I enjoy both these teams now, oddly enough. The, the Colts have made me a fan again this year. I have always despised the Colts, Colts organization because of Peyton Manning. I've gone in depth countless times about why I dislike Peyton Manning. The AFC finalist Colts, just everything about that team has pissed me off. But then they got Frank Reich from the Philadelphia Eagles. And I am forever in debt for what Frank Reich helped did for my Eagles to win the Super Bowl. So wherever he goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of enjoy it. I've always been a fan of Andrew Luck. Um, I've always been a fan of T.Y. Hilton. Obviously, Quentin Nelson's the man. You got my adopted son, Darius Leonard, who's first team all pro. Congrats on that. So, and you got, you know, a couple Gators. You got Quincy Wilson back there. So there's there's a bunch of guys in Indianapolis. I enjoy watching the Colts play. But I've always kind of liked Houston, Texas. My favorite wide receiver of all time, debatably, is Andre Johnson. I like everything about the Colts. Obviously, JJ Watts, dope. And Deshaun Watson, I've been a big fan of him since Clemson. So this is a tough one for me. And even while, you know, I showed the preseason love of the Texans going to the Super Bowl, I just think the momentum that the Colts have and the strengths of the Colts are their offensive line, which should help mitigate the talented, talented front seven of the Houston Texans. And then, well, where, where can Houston 
look at trying to mask their weakness. That's their secondary. I don't necessarily think that the Houston Texans is going to be able to shut down that passing attack of Andrew Luck with the struggles they've had just for whatever reason the secondary. They've given them a lot of yards. We saw it in the Philadelphia Eagles game. They, there's no way Philadelphia should have been able to come, in, come back in that game. Yes, Nick Foles is a god. But, you know, the fact that these guys are getting wide open and, and, and just for whatever reason, their linebackers' inability to cover tight ends and the stumbles and stuff, it just feels like that whatever's going on with that Texan secondary isn't going to work out. And it's only a matter of time to it cost them a very, very big game. So I'm going with the upset from a win-loss record standpoint. Give me the Colts to move on past the number three seed Houston Texans here in this game. I'm going with the 9-1. I'm going with the hot team. I'm going with the hotter quarterback. Though, again, just for this game, don't care who wins. I like both these teams. And, uh, yeah. Let's go into the second AFC game. We have the L.A. Chargers versus the Baltimore Ravens. And now this is one that I'm kind of going against my gut and just going my head. And I'm picking the Chargers. The Chargers looked dog shit awful against the Baltimore Ravens a couple weeks ago. For whatever reason, I just have this thing in my head that, like, Phil Rivers is throwing too many interceptions against good teams. I don't know if that's actually, you can factually back that up. I just remember going into that game in the regular season, the Chargers and the Ravens, I was like, Phil Rivers is going to cost him this game. I don't know what it is, but he's taking these, these risks that aren't working and they're putting his defense in terrible situations. I just feel like, I feel like more so the difference will be push comes to shove. I think both these teams have great defenses. Is Lamar Jackson going to be able to make plays against the Chargers defense, or is it going to be Phillip Rivers being able to make plays and figure out the Ravens defense? I just think, give me the edge right now to the veteran. Give me the edge to the guy that was you know, rightfully in that top five conversation for the MVP award this year. I think Phillip Rivers has more of a success rate to kind of figure out and find a way to move the ball on Baltimore's defense than it is Lamar Jackson, who really, in reality, you know, the Chargers are going to make him throw him. And I think ultimately it's going to come down to a point in time where Lamar, big fan of Lamar Jackson, he's not developed. He's not refined enough as a passer at the NFL level to be able to make those throws that he is going to have to make. He's make those throws that the Chargers are going to make him have to make at this kind of stage. So, again, another scenario that I'm not really rooting for either team. I don't dislike either of those teams. I just think the Chargers have the slight edge because of the quarterback. Edge, Phillip Rivers, therefore edge to the Chargers. But again, man, that Ravens defense, that run game is no joke. And, and for whatever it's worth, you know, kind of pick the Ravens to beat them the first time in the regular season. So moving to the NFC. First up, we have the Philadelphia Eagles and Chicago Bears. Not going to go into that all again. I ultimately am going with the Eagles. Cliff Notes, Cliff Notes version is, I think, ultimately the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line will be able to limit, limit. I'm not saying they're going to outright shut them out, but I think the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line will be able to limit the pass rush from the Chicago Bears, and I think that Mitchell Trubisky is going to struggle. So going to the next one is Seattle versus Dallas. Oh, I remember that one time Seattle played Dallas in the playoffs and Tony Romo botched the hold on the uh, field goal and they lost the game. Uh, that was awesome. I'm going Seattle. Dallas is one and done. Name a more iconic duo. Dallas being one and done in the playoffs. You know, that, that's just that's just what happens. Um, I think Seattle's a really, really hot team. I think Chris Carson's one of the most underrated running backs in the league. Today on Twitter, I posted my tier rankings for running backs. I put Carson in tier three. This guy's a monster. I still am shocked that the Seattle Seahawks wasted. Not only, I don't want to say wasted because it makes it seem like I don't think Rashad Penny's a good player. But they, they ultimately wasted a first-round pick on a running back when they had Chris Carson back there, who's looked really good, and then he got hurt. And now he came back and is firmly established himself as the top running back. And I just think if you're a Seahawks fan looking long-term, I don't. they're just not compliments to each other to be maybe an Ingram or Kamara or an Eckler and Melvin Gordon. You know, like those those tandems that work, and you could say, yeah, maybe that first-round draft pick's worth it if we can get that kind of tandem. I don't think Carson and Rashad Penny will mesh that well uh, as a tandem. Either way, I digress. Clearly, I'm going Seattle on this one. They're the hotter team. Dallas is incredibly inconsistent, and I think Dak Prescott, uh, you know, you're going to put him, have to get him to, uh, get, you're going to have to get him to throw the ball a lot. Throw the ball a lot. What we see with Dak Prescott is, yeah, we might give him one nice throw to Cole Beasley to beat the terrible New York Giants, but more often than not, he is overthrowing these passes. I think that Seahawks defense is going to cause him a struggle and uh, give me the Seahawks, clearly. So moving on to the next round, we have the Kansas City Chiefs against the Indianapolis Colts. Give me the Chiefs in this game to bounce back. This is going to be uh, the turn of, turn of the page, if you will, for the Kansas City Chiefs, who struggled seemingly against every good team that they faced. I think they just match up really, really well against the Colts. I don't see... they have The Colts aren't necessarily a fast defense, 
And I think that is going to be just the mismatch. There's going to be too much speed for the Chiefs, too high-powered of an offense for them to uh, be able to outscore. I think this is going to be a very high-scoring game. Again, I'm not going to say you know it's going to be like the Chiefs-Rams game, but I do think this is going to be a game what team can score the most points on the other defense. I think ultimately that is going to be the Chiefs. And now, you know, with a healthy Eric Berry, maybe that Chiefs defense is not going to be as garbage. Going to the second game, we have the Chargers with the Patriots. I'm going to be pulling so hard. For the Chargers in this game, I just feel like, again, something about Phillip Rivers making dumb decisions has been creeping up the last couple weeks in the regular season. Somehow I feel like that is going to continue. He might be able to get past it in the Baltimore game. And while I'm all out pulling for the Chargers to win, I think this is going to be a game New England's going to win at home. Um, you know, they're very, very good at home. You got Tom Brady, who's solid. You got James White. I think James White's going to have a huge game. I think the Patriots defense, I think the Patriots don't look impressive in this game, but they do enough just to move on to the championship. Surprise, surprise. Looking at the NFC, we have the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles. And while I support my Eagles through thin, it's just not a good matchup. This is not a good matchup. While we have the Nick Foles magic, while I think an upset is, you know, you can never count out this Philadelphia Eagles team going to New Orleans, going to their home stadium. It's, it's, it's just not a favorable scenario, and I don't want to just be completely biased. Throw this video at the window because I'm going to be super biased and say Philly wins the Super Bowl. I think going against New Orleans, back against the wall, whip out those dog masks, whip out those ski masks, because we're going to need every little bit because we travel well. But I just think ultimately this is not a great matchup. And while it's nowhere near going to be the ass kicking that it was when it was a week seven or eight or nine or whatever, it's still it's still probably not going to be overly pretty. And I think the magic runs out for Philly. We got to get healthy. We got to get Nick Foles back to being a backup, even though I love him. Even though I appreciate, even though he's probably one of my favorite players of all time now, he needs to get back to being a backup so we can get Carson Wentz leading this team in the playoffs. Carson Wentz leading this team, a fully healthy team next year, probably can beat anybody. Going to the second NFC game, we have the Rams and the Seahawks. Give me the Rams. Again, another one of those scenarios where they play the same team three times in a row, and every single time the Seattle Seahawks have just been that short of winning. And I think this time off is going to help Jared Goff have him refocus, have McVay basically fine-tune his robot, because that's pretty much all Jared Goff is, is a robot, an extension of McVay. Everything goes through McVay. I think he will have a game plan to make it three in a row against the Seattle Seahawks and set up a very exciting matchup in the NFC Championship. So going to the championship games. In the AFC, we have the Kansas City Chiefs against the New England Patriots. Give me the Chiefs. This is going to be the game that the Chiefs buck the trend of them being unable to beat the big-name teams. I think that it's just it's it's time has come, man. The Patriots have looked old. Patriots have looked slow. Gronk does not look the same. Tom Brady can only complete five-yard passes seemingly this year, which, is, I mean, depending on who you ask, it's no different than any other year. I just think that this is the year that Andy Reid can get his team back into the Super Bowl. I, I just feel like everything's there. You have that momentum. You have that hot quarterback. I think that, you know, underrated running game, Damian Williams, it's almost like the Chiefs running game because of how good their passing attack is. It's almost like Pittsburgh. Whatever running back you put in there, they're going to do fine. Damian Williams pretty much has picked up where Kareem Hunt left off. I'm not saying Kareem Hunt's not a more talented running back because, you know, clearly he is. But they, at least they have found that running game. They have not lost that dimension to their RPOs. And I think this is going to be the Chiefs knock off the Patriots. Uh, going to the NFC Championship game, we have the Saints and the Rams. Saints are going to be – Saints are not a great matchup for the Rams, I think, that, uh, you know, ultimately you got to make Goff throw. They can get pressure on Goff. They're going to make Goff have to throw in tight windows. Give me the Saints. I think Drew Brees last to Raw. He's going to be able to find a way to put a lot of points on this Rams defense that is – from a name standpoint, very, very overrated. They should play a lot better given the talent, the name value that they have, but they're just not. I think the Saints are going to be able to expose them just a little bit to get back to the Super Bowl, which makes, a, from a neutral standpoint, a super exciting Super Bowl between the Kansas City Chiefs and the New Orleans Saints. And ultimately, it comes back, that ugly head of the Chiefs against big-name teams. For whatever reason, the Chiefs have struggled every single game against big-name teams. And while they're able to put that beside them and get past the old aging Patriots, I feel like in this matchup, it's the Saints trophy to lose. Give me New Orleans winning the Super Bowl. Give me Drew Brees getting his second Super Bowl. Give me the Saints not ruining and wasting every year that Drew Brees has been good. Got to get in a little bit in there because Saints fans, while most of them are good, some of them are super annoying and they act like they've actually done something when they've in reality wasted most of the years of one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, I think he gets the job done. Definitely wouldn't mind seeing the Saints as a neutral win. They have a lot of good, exciting players. This would be a super good, fun Super Bowl to watch from a neutral standpoint. So give me the New Orleans Saints as your 2019, well, 2018, 2019 
Super Bowl champion. Those are my picks. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with any picks. Give me, ultimately, probably just to be easiest, give me your Super Bowl prediction. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Let me know. But that does it for me here so far today, guys. I'll catch you back here later on for the, speaking of the Super Bowl, Huskies Super Bowl extravaganza. Until that time, as always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.